Hey lovely people, welcome to Bible with you. Today is another day and we are diving into the word to get inspired, to get encouraged and to continue with our daily Christian work with God. You are welcome to this channel. If you are new, this is a place you can experience more of God. So do all to like, subscribe and share this video. And if you are a returning viewer, thank you for coming again. So today we are looking at Psalm 37 how to overcome envy and worry the bible reads do not worry about the ungodly yes do not fret because of evildoers nor be envious of the workers of iniquity for they shall soon be cut down like grass and wither as green herb yes we must not worry because of evildoers it's a common thing for the righteous to fret or be envious of the wicked asaph was bothered by this problem in psalm 73 wondering why the wicked often experience so much prosperity. The words do not fret literally means do not get heated, which is also how we might express it. Or we might say don't get all worked up or even be cool. To fret is to worry, to have this heart burn, to fume, to become vexed. Nature is very apt to kindle a fire of jealousy when it sees lawbreakers riding on horses and obedient subjects walking in the mare. It is wrong to worry. It is harmful. It is needless. Let the trust in wait. Events will justify the action. It's as foolish as it is wicked to repine or be envious at the prosperity of others, whether they are godly or ungodly. It is God who is the dispenser of the bounty they enjoy. And most assuredly, he has a right to do what he will with his own. They shall soon be cut down like grass. David gives the same answer as have came to in Psalm 73, understanding that any prosperity experienced by the workers of iniquity was only temporary. Grass is green for a reason, and so is the herb, but both will wither quickly. We think of a wicked man eating a magnificent dinner while a godly man goes hungry. The wicked man eats anything and everything he wants, and his table is loaded as he enjoys his meal. Then we see the bigger picture. He eats his last meal on death row and in a moment will face triple judgment. The test is found in time. All the apparent prosperity of the wicked is transient, it passes and perishes, as do the wicked themselves. Put your trust and delight in the Lord. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Trust in the Lord and do good. Instead of worrying and envying, David counseled the man or woman of God to simply trust God and do good for his glory. It is remarkable how quickly we can get distracted from the simple work of trusting God and doing good. Looking at the seeming prosperity of the wicked is one way we often get distracted. Faith cures fretting, sight is cross-eyed, and views things only as they seem, hence her envy. Faith has clear up optics to behold things they really are, hence her peace. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. David also counseled the man or woman of God to leave aside worry and envy by simply enjoying the blessings God gives. He provided Israel a land to enjoy and his faithfulness was like food for them every day. Delight yourself also in the Lord. David advised the man and woman of God to replace worry and envy with a conscious delight in the Lord. This means to cheer one's heart and mind by considering and by faith receiving multiple blessings. Expect all thy happiness from him and seek it in him. It includes a deliberate redirection of one's emotions such as Paul and Silas in prison, singing as well as praying. 
we cannot delight without effort. We must withdraw our eager desire from the things of earth, fastening and fixing them on Him. The reason many apparent Christians do not delight in God is that they do not know Him very well and the reason they do not know Him very well is that they do not spend time with Him. Do not think first of the desires of thy heart, but think first of delighting thyself in thy God. If thou hast accepted him as thy Lord, he is thine, so delight in him, and then he will give you the desires of your heart. We notice that David wrote, delight yourself in the Lord. The word also is important, reminding us that there are legitimate joys and pleasures in life outside the life of the Spirit. The believer who truly trusts God has the capability to also find true delight in the Lord. And he shall give you the desires of your hearts. This is a wonderful and even safe promise. The one who truly delights in the Lord will find his heart and desires changed steadily, aligning with God's own and God's desires for his life. Thus, we see that finding delight in God is key to a happy and satisfied life. This shows that God intends to fulfill the hard desires of the redeemed man or woman of God. To be sure, it is possible for such desires to be clouded by sin or selfishness. Yet, even when so clouded, there is almost always a godly root to the desire that is entirely in the will of God. The man or woman of God should find his or her rest in this and leave aside worry and envy. Thank you for joining Bible with you. We hope that this has helped you. Do not worry, do not envy and continue to trust in God because God has magnificent plans for you. Don't look at joy of the wicked or their prosperity. God has a great portion for you. God bless you and thank you for joining once again.